Welcome to the lesson on call management in Service Desk. Call sheets are the heart of Service Desk and of its call management system. There are four to a page, and you can think of them as a powerful place to take notes when taking calls. Each has facilities for recording all data that could be relevant to incoming calls and service orders. Despite the primary job of call sheets being to transition them into jobs, you can use them in many other ways such as inter-office communication, personal reminders, etc. They are little digital notepads, only in this case ones with great power, where you may jot down anything that needs attention in a place visible by all in your company. And use them liberally, for there are an infinite number of call sheets. Every call sheet has several main features, on the left is the main body of information for the call sheet, this is where you type out whatever is relevant to what you're doing. In most cases, this is customer information, and data relevant to what will become a job. On the right is information telling you about this call sheet, who created it, and when, the active desk it is assigned to, the current status of the call sheet, and if there's notes or other information attached. Just like almost everything in Service Desk, if you're unsure what a button or field is for, just hover over it for an explanatory tooltip. You can tell a lot about a call sheet status just at a glance. A call sheet assigned to you and active will have colored text on a white background, like this. One assigned to you, but not active, will have colored text on a gray background. Any call sheet not assigned to you will have gray text on a gray background. Navigating call sheets is very simple. Within a page, you can just click into the specific call sheet you want to use. If you want to move between call sheets on a page without the mouse, Control Enter moves your focus forward, Control Backspace moves back. In many cases, you only want to navigate between active call sheets assigned to your station. To do this use Alt Enter and Alt Backspace to go forward and backward respectively. To move between pages, use page down on your keyboard to move forward, and page up to move back. To start using a new call sheet, just go into the first one that's still empty, which is always at the end of those already in use. If you're not already on the page containing the next empty call sheet, it's easy to move quickly there by pressing Control page down on your keyboard. This is the last page command. There is also a first page command, with Control page up on your keyboard. Using these two commands is often an efficient way of moving around. You can also search within call sheets by pressing Ctrl F on your keyboard. You can search on any information that might be in a call sheet, such as name, address, phone number, or email. Now, let's take a look on how to transition a call sheet into a real job. On the call sheet we want to turn into a job, under the status section, click job slash sale. This will open up the Create Job Sale dialog box. You can choose if you're going to print an actual physical service ticket at the top. Here you can set the job count. This number indicates how much time a job might take up. It is an arbitrary number you can use however you like, but a typical job might have a job count of 1, which is the default, but if it is going to take twice as long you might give it a 2. Here you select the technician's initials to whom this job is assigned. Then, if it is tentative or definite. If this job absolutely needs to belong to this technician specifically, choose definite. Otherwise, choose tentative to indicate another tech can be assigned later instead if it fits their route better. Tentative is the default, as it provides the most flexibility for scheduling. When you hit OK, the job is created and is immediately in your active job list. The call sheet from which you pull the data to create this job is now dimmed or grayed out, which means its purpose is complete. To view it as an active job you can click the Jobs Current button at the top of the Service Desk window on the menu bar, or hit F7. This brings up the Job Records window. You'll notice much of the info in this window looks similar to a call sheet. This is because when you created the job, it pulled in the information you had entered in the call sheet previously. It will default to bringing up the most recently created job record, but you can navigate them by using the page up and page down keys. In another video, we'll go over jobs and job records in more detail, but for now you can glance around and notice that there is lots of other information and actions.
There is this current job records origination info, a section for job status, a button for pictures attached to this job, many buttons for actions at the bottom such as ordering parts and scheduling, and also a history pane which shows record of every action taken on a job with details of who did it and when. You can also manually type notes here too. As we mentioned previously, the call sheet that you had completed turned gray or dimmed. Every night an auto archive process runs that cleans up these completed call sheets and other completed items in service desk and archives them so they are no longer cluttering up your workspace. You can trigger an archive whenever you like by typing Alt-A on your keyboard or by clicking Command Summary, Call Sheet Controls, then Archive Call Sheets. Immediately all call sheets that had any completed status will be archived and removed from your view. If at any point you need to view archived call sheets, you can type Ctrl F2 on your keyboard or click File Functions, Other, then Archived Call Sheets. Archived call sheets will be indicated by a blue background and navigable in the same fashion as active call sheets. Since there's likely to be large quantities of call sheets archived over time, there's additional controls at the top to navigate and search them efficiently. Thanks for watching this lesson on call management in Service Desk. If you have any questions, please reach out to our team using the information in the video description.